So this will be the Debian rolling both by Raphael Herzog. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy. So it's going to be above, so I have a few introductory slides to remember the, the general topic and a few set of questions so that you can well, to start the discussion. Um, it's really specific on the rolling part. Uh, I mean, we have the cut project, which is more encompassing, uh, but this is really uh, the rolling, so testing, uh, te uh, testing distribution that is usable. So. Uh, well, my goal, this is my definition of uh, rolling, it's a uh, uh, distribution that is always usable by end user, but which is not stable because it should have regular new upstream version. Uh, I believe uh, it should target mainly the desktop market because, well, that's the kind of user who uh, are really keen on testing a new upstream release and uh, who can afford the occasional hiccup uh, that it implies. The consequences are that, well, desktop users are mainly on the E386 and IMD64 architectures, so uh, for the usable part, we should mainly care about those architectures. So other are nice to have, but not really required for rolling. Of course, constantly usable means that maintainers should care about their package in rolling. So that's why I seek some sort of official support by Debian to give some weight to the constantly usable parts. Well, and targeting the desktop market obviously means not targeting the server market. Because, well, I think everybody would agree that the server market is well served by our stable release. So, with my definition of rolling, I mean, why not call it testing? Because testing is really close to <laughs> rolling. Testing is regularly updated, but is it really always usable? Well, if you speak with people, uh, yes, mainly. Uh, most, well, we have many feedback from people who are using testing daily and which are quite happy with it. But if you read the recent thread on Debian Devil, there are at least some people who are saying no to this question. Uh, when I come back on the next slide on the details, the reason why they answer no. Can we afford to support users uh, on, the, on testing? Because, well, uh, there's not always official support either for test for security or, or even the usable part. Sometimes the release manager break. Uh, stuff in testing. Uh, and the, we have few maintainers who don't care really about testing because, well, it's just a place for, uh, which is used for, to prepare the next table. It doesn't matter if something is br broken uh, until uh, the, uh, the freeze because, well, as they believe, they have enough time during the freeze to fix whatever is needed. Um, well, we have, for example, uh, uh, Roland Mas mentioned once that the Fusion Forge, well, it's a quite special package in Debian, but uh, it involves many other packages, and it's uh, difficult to get it stable when all the other parts are move, moving around with new upstream version. And given he's mostly alone with doing the work, uh, I mean, he invests the required time only when the world step changing, so during the freeze. My opinion is that supporting our packages and testing should be a duty of all maintainers. And it's a cultural shift that we should embrace. Uh, it's something that's sort of already happening uh, naturally because, well, testing is a place where we are fixing uh, our packages so that they are perfect for the next release. But we should still reaffirm it and uh, go a bit further because we don't want to fix them only before the next release, but on a regular ma manner. I mean, 
as soon as problem come up, they should be regularly fixed. It's all a problem of manpower, but. And also, it's the best way for us to uh, actually build a solid, stable release. So, and all the release manager would agree that getting rid of release critical bugs and annoying bugs in testing as soon as possible is best, and not have to wait until we freeze. So, what makes testing not really usable? One of the common uh, comments is the, the lack of a good installer. It means we don't have any official way to install testing directly. Uh, in truth, there are many ways to work around this. Uh, we can use the stable installer and this upgrade, or you can use almost any version of the installer and in expert mode and pick up the target distribution. Uh, but it's not, well, expert mode is not really what we want to advertise to our uh, rolling so users. Technically true, it installs testing by default. Okay. All daily, builds, all daily builds of the installer install testing by default, and all the CDs are testing. Okay, so maybe uh, we can simply uh, grab a copy that we know that works and keep it. Another concern that has been raised is that uh, some bugs in testing uh, last for too long because, uh, well, when you have a big transition, sometimes the uh, bug fixes can take a lot of time. So that's why jo Jocelyn Mouet suggested to have a sort of overlay repository where we can grab or cherry pick updates from seed and make them available to testing users. In theory, it's nice, but uh, uh, the main concern I have is that if we can do that in a novel repository, why not do it in testing itself? There could be cases for, uh, uh, where the migration, migration is not possible due to problems on alternative architectures, where it would make sense, but in practice, I'm not sure it's happened that often. Excuse me? Doesn't that happen already? Because um, high priority fixes get, um, get propagated to testing um, um, in, in, in the course of a few days. Yes, but uh, if, if you have uh, a new version of a dependency and which is uh, going to create a transition, uh, until the transition is ready to migrate uh, whole, the whole together, your package won't migrate. So. But that's the kind of problem that might If you change that in a rolling repository, the repository, the repository won't work. <laughs> well, the, the idea is, to, is, in this case, to sort of uh, move the transition sooner uh, in the overlay repository. Well, it's not really, there are problems with this approach that I mentioned. But, well, it's sort of uh, the, least uh, contentious proposal that have been to pro suggested on Devil in the last dis discussion. But, well, let me, uh, I'll just finish uh, with the slide and then we'll jump in the discussion, really. Uh, the th third problem is that some packages are dropped uh, for different reasons, sometimes for transition, like, well, the example that Neil gave to, before in the Debian release talk, but usually it's only uh, on a specific architecture, usually not a mainstream one, and it's really not problematic for rolling, I believe. The mo most problematic case is that when we have a package that, not really, uh, that we can't afford to support on, the, uh, on a long-term basis. We had the cases with Chromium, which had been sort of fixed, but it's still not uh, very clear how we're going to support it on the long term. But uh, in those cases, we tend to drop packages from uh, testing because they can't be supported in stable. But they are supportable in a rolling distribution just by uploading new upstream version on a constant basis. Okay.
well, just to have a, an idea of the audience, I would like you to raise your hand. Uh, well, I have a few questions for you, and you have to raise your hand to answer. I just explained what I mean by the question uh, before. First one is, do you believe that testing is usable? Uh, or another way to put it would be, do you think that there are users that would be well served by testing? That means that are not well served either by stable or by unstable. Second question is, do you believe that we should understand the usage of testing? Or should we officially advertise testing as something that should be used by end users? Uh, and the end users that you have identified in question one, of course. <laughs> and do you believe that we can support testing, usage of testing? Do we have the required means, human, technical, etc., to provide a good experience to the, those new testing users? Uh, well, and if we don't, is, is it something that we can easily or with a reasonable effort? This is something we can achieve with a reasonable effort. So, so who believes that testing is usable in the... Raise your hand, please. <laughs> who believes that testing is not usable? <laughs> okay, well, I know it's broad. That's why I gave a sort of meta explanation first. It's easy. Okay. Do you believe that we should endorse usage of testing? Should we advertise it more? Okay, a bit more mixed. Uh, who believes that we should not endorse it? I'm a microphone, please. Because it's recorded. If the goal is to say, please use testing so that you can do bug reports and help us, then that's great. But like, if it's to say, uh, please use testing for your everyday life, I don't think it's a good idea. Actually, I think it's both. Because I, fi I find bugs when I use it for my daily life. So there's no difference between both. And third question, do you believe that we can support usage of testing? Please answer. Or do you believe... So, do you believe that testing is not, or that we can't afford to support testing? Okay, not few, but many don't know in this question what to answer. <laughs> the rate of abstention in this question was pretty high. Yeah, okay. Uh, I asked the same question to uh, the re current release team. Uh, I got only four answers out of two, 12 persons who have been asked. Uh, Everybody said yes to the first question and to the third question. The they were mixed. The positive version of the question. Yes, yes the positive version. So, so <laughs> already the manager believes that testing is mostly usable and uh, that we can support it, it as is. They are mixed on the idea of endorsing it more officially than no. <laughs> so that's why I asked the question to Neil before. Uh, is it fine or not if we say loudly uh, testing is usable and we welcome users to use it? Uh, well. So at least the uh, release team seems to be in agreement with the <laughs> dev and body, which is nice to see. Perhaps I, c I could add one little thing. Just I have friends we use uh, Linux distributions in, gen in general and uh, say about Debian, I heard it, and it's them say that stable is too old always and, and unstable is too unstable, the, but they don't consider testing, so I say to them, use testing instead. So they have, have the, the testing as an option if they think that unstable is too broken and the stable is too old. So why not tell them to use testing? Yeah, I agree that we should. Uh, I mean, I'm convinced of this. Uh, but that's why we're di discussing here how to achieve this without uh, creating big frameworks. <laughs> okay. I, I believe that 
this community of testing users already exists. And I know that because when my desktop packages, which aren't so many, but when they migrate to testing, I see a bump of bug reports. And they're not bad bug reports, but I can tell the difference between bug reports from SID users and from testing users. <laughs> no, I, I'm serious, they're not bad, but, but you know, they have different expectations. So, a little word on stuff that has been done, but it's not so much. There's this repository for, uh, of Jocelyn Wet, so, which is supposed to be an overlay uh, on testing. He has working code to generate it. Uh, unfortunately, we are almost unable to find problematic packages uh, that we can add to this repository. So, it's both a problem that we haven't. Uh, uh, we don't have this community of testing users which is uh, actively telling us what's not going on, uh, what's not working uh, currently. currently. And, uh, also, when you try to look, for example, to, uh, in the list of current RC bugs to find packages that are not working well in testing, you will see that most problems, most RC bugs are not really user issues, but rather develop developer issues uh, like packages not compiling or that kind of stuff. Uh, well, I, I mean, I tr uh, when he announced it, I tried uh, to have a look. I found maybe two or three packages that uh, were problematic in testing, and the result has been a few uh, aging hints from uh, MIDI, I guess, uh, to make them migrate sooner instead of uh, putting, that, putting them in this repository. Another thing that has been worked on uh, during DevCamp is uh, Joachim Breitner has suggested uh, to use a new technology, SAT solvers, to improve uh, testing migrations. And we can use it, uh, we could use it at least uh, automatically to uh, make uh, Jocelyn's experiment more reli reliable. Because, uh, well, basically you can give it a list of packages that you want to migrate and it will compute automatically uh, the minimum set of stuff that you have to pick together to make sure the migration won't create problems in testing or rolling, however you call it. So. Well, my first question uh, would be uh, how to set up uh, the user community side because uh, I mean, if we want to have some clear feedback on the, on the question, is testing usable? We have to go see users and ask them what's not working on, what's not working in testing, and grab some data. So I would like us to I would like us to provide a place where people, uh, well, a few developers and the users can meet and uh, exchange and see uh, whether what we can do to improve testing right now. And uh, maybe ap after a few months, we will be able to see if uh, really uh, a separate repository like rollingdebian.net is, is needed or if it's enough to collaborate with release manager to get fixes in. My opinion is that it should be enough, but maybe some hard data would be good. And then this input is, can also be useful to the, the release manager because, well, if we know what's blocking users, maybe they are keen to fix stuff in a way that, uh, well, organize their migration in a way that ensures that uh, bugs are fixed sooner for users, or at least important bugs are fixed sooner. So this is my first question to you. Uh, where should this happen? Uh, do we have an existing mailing list that can be used for this? It, should it be part of Debian users? Should it be part of Debian testing? We have this Debian testing list, which is mainly used to, to process upgrade reports, but it's not used during the rest of the li uh, life, cycle, life cycle. Maybe we can use it for this. Should we have a dedicated pseudo package in the BTS, rolling.debian.org or whatever? Or should we re reuse the release.debian.org entry? I don't know. What are your opinions here? 
maybe maybe do you think it would be reasonable to to see, to to use the release.debian.org entry with a few set of user tags or I think if uh, we are going to uh, uh, propose some hints, for example, or spot some packages that should migrate uh, faster than others, it would make sense to uh, use the release.debian.org to the package, the BTS, so that we can set up hints for that. So it's okay for us. Yeah, okay. this is when we have a clear output already. Uh, when we have, uh, where should users uh, say, okay, uh, I experience uh, this in testing. Uh, my uh, camera application doesn't work. I don't know exactly what's broken. Uh, sh should this all, all, all be hidden in the various bug, track, bug tracking discussion uh, or bug reports, or should it take place on some mailing lists? So one recent initiative that I noticed was there's this IRC channel, Debian Next which seems to contain the target audience for a rolling release, or, or at least some of those people who are not developers but are nonetheless interested in using SID and testing. So um, that could be a point of contact anyway. I don't know if, I mean, obviously an IRC channel is not necessarily your canonical support or interaction place, but there's some people. Uh, uh, we have set up a Gobi entry, uh, so feel free to complete with what has been su suggested here. Uh, Luca, can you note uh, Debian Next uh, channel, IRC channel? Can you make it a little bigger? Yes, I can try. Uh, oh, it's in five hours, yeah, I know. I've already said it a bit bigger, but enough. Says. Says. Actually, I had a question for those who think that uh, testing is not usable yet, because I personally uh, think that it is usable. Uh, and if it's not, we have a big problem because we make stable releases out of that. So yeah, it should be usable and we don't break uh, packages. I mean, so many times it's like... Uh, I agree. Let's give the, the voice to Luna and Olga. <laughs> um, my main issue is about security. Actually, because we can't, I'd say we can't advertise to our users a uh, distribution that has no proper security updates. Uh, because the, uh, as far as I know, the security team is not interested in doing uh, like dedicated updates to, te to testing. So they are like, so there the, the security issues are fixed by specific patches in stable and by newer up uploads in unstable. Issue is that newer uploads in unstable, they, get, they can get into transition issues and not migrate to testing soon enough to protect our users. And I think that's, um, we shouldn't, this is my reason why I don't think that testing should be advertised or is like totally usable by users because if we have some massive security issues, then it's going to be hard to uh, avoid bad PR and a lot of shit, and people saying Debian is, you know, like we had for the OpenSSL issue. Well, actually, we already had this discussion several times. It's not really a, a true issue because, well, either the maintainer cares and he can do a TPU uploads uh, to get it sooner, or he don't, and it will be fixed anyway uh, when the packet migrates. And uh, usually, there's an RC bugs associated, so it's tracked and uh, we, uh, the release team tries to get them in quite quickly. And if, well, I, I don't know, but someone made a st study, and uh, usually you have less security bugs in seed and testing than you have in stable, because quite a few minor security issues tend to be not fixed in stable, while they are uh, fixed by new upstream version in seed. There's also the, um, the testing security team 
which is currently inactive, but all the infrastructure is still there if necessary to start spinning that back up and actually doing the work again. And yeah. in the past, testing has been maintained near to a level of stable as far as security fixes. Yeah, and the security tracker has the information whether well, a package in testing is vulnerable or not. So I don't think this is a real concern for all of us. I just wanted to mention TPU. And uh, usually when you fix a uh, security bug, you upload with the high priority. So it gets uh, migrates quite fast in two days. And you can uh, make it faster if needed. So. So any other suggestion maybe for uh, where we should meet our users, for our testing users? Because while we had the test Debian Next IRC channel. So May I ask a question? Yeah, who, sure. who is the intended target user? Is it an existing Debian user who wants to not be locked into an old distribution and wants to take a chance on testing? Or is this for a new user who might be choosing between Ubuntu and, say, Debian Preview or something like this? because I'm not going to recommend a friend of mine to um, start using uh, a Linux distribution by saying Debian testing. I would be more likely to say, well, Ubuntu's got newer stuff than a one and a half year old Debian stable. Well, uh, users, uh, as though they are keen on using it, of course. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to force anyone to use it or to not use it. But uh, yes, clearly, w one of my motivation is to enlarge the potential user base of Debian. Uh, so I'm keen on attracting new people to Debian with Debian testing. Uh, that said, we already, already have users, and uh, we can also try to do better for those that we already have. Um, I do think that there are, uh, I do think that there are interesting um, users, um, target users for testing, which do not use testing now, but they use Ubuntu. And these are the experienced uh, desktop users. Um, I do not think that we are um, set up to handle um, real U uh, Linux or computer newbies or computer um, just Linux users in the um, main sense of the world but, um, very um, very well now. Maybe um, maybe so, um, so, um, later um, that, that can be done. But um, um, a person who is a bit knowledgeable and interested in um, infrastructure um, uh, of, uh, in the Debian infrastructure may be um, able to, um, to use testing um, already now. I think that's a bit also a perception problem because I don't think that Debian stable is unusable for users. and can be installed very easily. So I think that if we are constantly saying stable is not, u not usable or not suited for users, I think that's wrong and a problem. No, no, I mean stable. People are constantly, constantly saying stable is not suited for users. Um, I, it, it, um, stable is obviously usable for users, um, but it's not attractive to desktop users who want the latest and greatest. Testing is perceived as not usable for users. Um, if, um, as far as the users that we are targeting, if we have a rolling release like testing, you're, you're correct, we would, we would attract the more knowledgeable top end of the people who want new stuff. Um, I think if we, if we want to attract more people than that, we have to find some way to do something more snapshot-like so they don't have to deal with constant potential breakage. I'm not sure it's, if it's me or... Okay. So yeah, um, I don't think anyone is saying indeed that stable is not usable. I think there are just different targets. So I have in mind when we discuss about rolling at least two targets which might benefit for something like cat or rolling. And one is the one that Joy just mentioned. And another interesting target, another target of people who might be interested into that are developers in the sense of software developers which want a stable system without risking you know you dev which breaks down and then fuck up one day of work or any other package that breaks down and fuck up one day of work but still need relatively recent development libraries and the like so maybe well i come back to my question of uh, where do we meet those users 
maybe uh, uh, we don't need a new place, but you need new, some documentation, advertising this documentation uh, but on how to best be uh, testing users. I, would you I, think I, this is, would be a workable approach? Yes, sorry, go, go on. I wonder what is not covered by um, the proposition of Jocelyn because it allows some fl flexibility around testing and it makes it provides something that is more or less working and then we of course have the problem of the freeze uh, which should be short and during the freeze uh, the users of this testing thing uh, don't get the, the updates but then what should developers do during the freeze we want them to fix RC bugs and some people do, some don't, and one of the problems of the freeze is, is also that uh, you get late on following new upstream releases. And people don't like to use experimental for this because you get various dependencies problems, so um, that's, that's something that we should fix or somehow find a way around. But yeah, my initial question is, what is not served by the proposition of Jocelyn? Well given that uh, Jocelyn's proposition is just to have something on top of uh, testing, it would work for me, but I fear that we're never going to have much interesting stuff in this overlay repository, so... So, well, you just introduced the next question, so how to get rolling rolling? <laughs> how to get, start with it? My initial proposition was to just call, uh, call uh, make it a symlink to testing because, well, we as we see, ma most people do think that testing is usable as is. We can do better, but there's no reason to have new infrastructure, really, except maybe some documentation or some place to discuss the issues with users. Uh, but given the, 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 the feedback I have, I, uh, I just got, uh, it seems like we don't really need a new, places, a new place to discuss. Maybe just use the BTS and some documentation or web page uh, listing current issues so that uh, people can be aware of what's not really working well in testing right now. So, well, the simulating approach uh, is just uh, uh, a marketing operation, is it true? Because, uh, well, it's a way to say, please come, we, we believe testing to be usable. Uh, and if it really turns out that we need uh, some different rules compared to testing, we have always the, op the option to replace the symlink by a true distribution. The other option is to make it a dedicated distribution right from the start. Uh, of course, that gives us more freedom to try new rules, but it gives also more risks to uh, hamper the stable risk process because, well, if we have conflicting rules or then we, we might slow down the stable risk process. So. And if we go out for a new dedicated distribution, we have to decide for a set of initial rules. And it turns out it's not so easy, given the numerous discussion we already had. So do you believe that well, just doing a, a rolling simling is reasonable or totally useless? or? Oh, okay. So, who believes that this is you, uh, a good idea first? <laughs> uh, okay, a thousand people. And who believes it's totally useless? Okay, a six or set, seven people. So, uh, most people do not care, apparently. <laughs> and, uh, well, release team, well, at least ne Neil said he doesn't care really. <laughs> Uh, who believes that it would be important to start with a dedicated distribution so that we can uh, try out new rules from the start? A distribution, you mean Swoot, yes, right. <laughs> well, <laughs> in TAC languages. <laughs> Is there anyone who believes that we should uh, uh, have a dedicated distribution with new rules? Okay, what, Clint, maybe can you expand uh, what would be the new rules if we do it? Because, well, Clint over there.
Well, um, if, if you're restricting to uh, the subset of architectures, then you don't need to wait for uh, um, the other architectures to build fixed packages, and you can, you can migrate quicker. Yeah. But uh, then we have the, the problem of the difference between testing and, uh, uh, and are there going to, to are there going to be people who don't care about uh, getting it fixed on the power PC because power PC is not considered uh, so it's a kind of trade-off that at least at the moment is difficult to evaluate but yeah I understand the idea we could do much better uh, if we really concentrate only on on two architectures but we're not there only for rolling, there's also stable, so... Yeah, Phil, or, or Peter first. May, I, I uh. have another, another idea. Uh, maybe uh, sometimes uh, we expect and we know that some breakages happen in testing because uh, some migrations and, and things like that. And uh, may, maybe when we know that this will happen, we can make some kind of lock, or I, I don't know which uh, locks the state uh, of the air hive in a, or, or the distribution in a usable state. And maybe it just uh, uh, stays the same for the few days, but it becomes usable because uh, well, it, 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 it happened maybe years ago yeah. that uh, 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 X.org become unusable, and, and it's such a critical thing that. Uh, if we want to propagate these to end users, we must ensure that uh, this yeah, I understand. For them. Uh, uh, but I don't think it's going to work out because you don't find it, you don't know it before, usually. Once it's broken, you know it, but before... <laughs> then maybe it's just some, maybe it's some, some rollback. Yeah, that would be a way to... But we're not supporting downgrades, we're... <laughs> thinking to me or every six hours, so it's not an easy problem. Yeah, Phil? Um, right, if we have separate rules, and uh, that allows people to focus on things like only having a few architectures, I see a, a serious danger that we'll end up with effectively a derived distribution, which doesn't really ever meet back up with Debian, because I think the release process is a bit like the point at which the gametes are passed on to the next generation. And uh, that if you don't force everything through that one moment, that you get divergence and new species. You know, the, the whole point of reproduction in uh, nature is that there's only one uh, set of gametes going into the next generation. If you have a species like uh, bees, the queen bee is in charge. And it doesn't matter what the rest of them do. <laughs> There's that moment, and then you get the next generation. That's, that happens at release time in Debian. Yeah. And if you don't, if you have some side branch, then some people will focus on that, and you'll just have something else. It won't be Debian anymore. Yeah, and also the problem uh, with different distribution is that uh, uh, you have much more combination of potential problems. Uh, we want to fix problems for the next table, but also for rolling in this case, and uh, you you really divide the user base for the testing in this case. So. It's also one of the reasons why it's not a, such a good idea to have a dedicated distribution. Yes, Peter? Yeah, um, <coughs> just a short comment on the last one before I move on. Uh, I think it uh, will divert resources if we are actually uh, splitting uh, packages and have to track versions in basically a network instead of uh, a sequence of versions and merging and upgrading uh, such systems will be interesting to say. Say the least. But um, my main point is I, I don't really uh, get the point on who is actually the target group of this uh, proposed uh, suite. Uh, is it the Ubuntu users? If it is the current Ubuntu users, we are focusing on the wrong area because when I install uh, Debian for, for my parents, for example, uh, the biggest problem with Debian is not uh, hardware support. It's more like the uh, lack of uh, proper handling of multimedia plugins and the browser plugins. Uh, the fact that Firefox doesn't handle the uh, text uh, mime type properly, it asks me to 
start Emacs instead of actually showing it in the browser. It's that kind of simple usability problems that uh, is blocking my parents' use of, uh, of Debian. It's not uh, lack of new versions. So if you're going to attract the Ubuntu users, uh, we have to fix those problems first. And uh, I'm, not I'm not sure who is actually, who are we trying to get to use testing? Is it ourselves? Who, well, who, are, who is the target group of this effort? Well, we, I think we already replied to the question before. Uh, uh, Zach mentioned, for example, developers. Uh, and he, uh, it's a particularly interesting target because it's a, uh, a set of people where uh, we can find contributors. So, uh, But uh, I don't have any restriction of uh, target users. I, I just know there are a lot of users who are uh, willing to use Debian and are looking for something a compromise between the stable and stable because they are not able to fix up uh, UDEV no, uh, no longer working, but uh, they are fluent with Debian tools otherwise. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting, well, yeah. I'm going, going back to the questions that you asked during the, the poll, which I think were interesting. And I'm really interested in knowing more about why some people are opposed to endorsing uh, the rolling uh, idea. The only one testing. Well, rolling um, or testing? <laughs> rolling release concept, uh, endorsing it. Why, so about what, what are the fears uh, to the well, Why do people believe that we should not advertise it more? Is it because of uh, resource or? Well, there's nothing after. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I don't really see the point of ha having a sim link, meaning that we would have two names. One would be testing, one would be rolling. If the name testing is wrong, then let's, let's discuss that and rename testing as rolling. That's it, end of the story, and we end the discussion here. So if, if we make something called rolling, I think obviously that's to make new rules. Well, we must start at some point, and you're, it's true that uh, we could just rename it, but well, we have to keep the testing simling because many users are, uh, have it, so just for compatibility. But also, as we heard, there's always these questions that we I intentionally avoided today because I know it would not fit in the <laughs> slot. But uh, keeping both names at least allows us to uh, make rolling diverge during freezes. I believe it, I would like to see it happen, uh, but given the, <laughs> time, uh, the state of the discussion with the release team, I'm not sure it's realistic right now, but one day it would be nice to have it. So keeping it as a second theme link uh, leaves us the possibility to do it at some point. So my time is open, uh, over, sorry. Uh, I guess we'll have to continue so, somewhere else or offset record, or do you really? Need to we really need to stop because okay. there are people needing to eat and finish the room and prepare it for the afternoon. Okay. So thank you, Raphael. Thank you.